Hello, this is Alice uh, here with Extinction Rebellion outside the uh, outside the Brazilian Embassy here in London, where Extinction Rebellion protesters are now making a stand against the UK government's involvement in ecocide in Brazil. Now here we've got a protester just behind me who's thrown uh, what looks like um, blood onto the side of the Brazilian Embassy um, to demonstrate against the lives that are being lost both human and animal that are being lost in Brazil right now because of um, involvement in ecocide by the British government and um, elsewhere as well. This is something that is going on right now and it affects us all. Um, as you can see, our rests are in the process of being made. We've got an Extinction Rebellion protester here on the floor uh, in handcuffs having thrown um, blood looking substance on the window. Now I'm going to turn around so that you can see this a bit closer up. Um, if you're just tuning in, this is at the Brazilian Embassy. Um, Extinction Rebellion making a stand against the UK's involvement in ecocide on a massive scale in Brazil. If you're unaware of what's going on in Brazil right now, um, there is a massive, massive problem happening um, with the lack of democracy um, and Britain is involved in that on a massive scale, helping to destroy forests. As you can see, this is a, a crime scene. We've got 20 Extinction Rebellion crime scene investigators ex demonstrating outside. Hey everyone, you're live on Extinction Rebellion. Could you explain what you're doing? We'll follow you while we talk. Okay, I just need to roll up the tape. Okay, the yeah. The no. We're an independent organization pointing out um, climate crime receipts, looking for evidence of eco size when in front of the Brazilian embassy for all these reasons. So we have to go now. Yeah. Places to go. Is it day? Is it day? Is it day? Lots of people. <laughs> so we're here because Brazil, the fires in the Amazon are worse this year than they were last year. Um, uh, restrictions on burning the forest, the Amazon, for clear cutting and for. Um, okay, I have to go. I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. Now, just to show you, as we. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just behind these police here we've got an Extinction Rebellion protester that has been arrested um, in handcuffs there, throwing blood in on top of the Brazilian embassy. We did just have the crime scene investigators here showing us that Ecoside is very much present and the UK government are involved. Now I'm going to follow the investigators. I believe we're going from here to another location. Let's see if I can catch up. So if you're just joining me, hi, my name is Alice, nice to see you, um, or not nice to see you really, I'd rather not be here, I'm sure lots of other people that are here as well would rather not be standing here, walking down the streets, having to talk about what is happening in Brazil and rest of, across the rest of the world really, though probably perhaps more obviously in the headlines and in the public knowledge so blatantly. Um, massive amounts of ecocide in the sense um, that forest is being destroyed and the UK is complicit really. So what we're doing here today, Extinction Rebellion, is saying that's not okay. In front of me now, I'll just show you who's in front of me. We've got crime scene investigators. These are people who are going around London looking for evidence of crime, climate crime. They found it at the Brazilian Embassy and we're now going over to, I believe we're going to Parliament Square and we are going to see if we can get the attention of the UK government that is very much complicit here in the eco side we're seeing. Now as you can see we've got the Extinction Rebellion flags flying. Everybody is wearing proper PPE. You can see the police are on site now as well, having made one arrest already at the Brazilian embassy. Everyone, I'm live streaming as part of Extinction Rebellion. 
a UK live stream, so I'm going to be following you if that's okay. Follow the green man. <laughs> Follow the green man, okay. <laughs> now this is one of the very many creative ways that people have been using to demonstrate the UK's involvement in ecocide around the world. But in this particular occasion, specifically looking at how destructive that is in Brazil, there are huge, huge problems going on around the world and the UK is complicit in many of them. If you're looking to find out more about that, you can absolutely go onto the Extinction Rebellion Facebook page, onto our website. There is lots of information there. Right now I am following a group of climate crime investigators who are going around London looking for evidence of climate crime. As I said before, they have found it at the Brazilian embassy where the UK has been found to be complicit in ecocide on a massive scale in Brazil. There's more that you can find out. In many ways, it's so overt, this ecocide, which is part of the reason why it's so shocking. I'm walking now with another Extinction Rebellion activist next to me. Hello. <laughs> um, and really, on the way over here, I was listening to one of many bits of information out there that talks about how we as a community, as a global community, should be coming together to help protect the Amazon, um, which is by far the world's largest um, beautiful forested area. And it comes across nine different countries, uh, but mostly in Brazil. If we lose the Amazon rainforest, of which this year there's been more fires than ever before, then really our hopes of escaping complete climate chaos are all but none. Uh, well, you um, can learn more about that by following all of that, the activity that we're going to be doing today and also by looking onto the Extinction Rebellion website. There's a podcast as well called Free Economics, uh, which looks at the economics of protecting the Amazon, which I really recommend you listen to because it does explain just how important this Amazon is for uh, protecting our environment from the climate chaos that we are currently ensuing. Um, and one thing that definitely has come from the horrendous global outcry against the fires and against that destruction and against the burning of land that the UK is absolutely complicit in is the recognition of how many fingers are inside that pie. And if you're watching this from England, we're on Extinction Rebellion UK, then you should be absolutely concerned about our involvement because we are absolutely involved. Now, I'm just walking through central London. I'll show you where I can see right now. Walking past um, some horse guards and following the climate crime investigators. Um, I as I think has been mentioned in the comments, uh, at the moment, Lloyds Bank are big palm oil investors, absolutely. Barclays Bank has got fingers in fossil fuels to no end, which is hideous. And the UK's complicit in supporting the aims and objectives of Barclays Bank, as well as many other banks that you may know. Uh, if you are listening to this, please, please have a look at where you're investing your money as individuals. We can only do so much when we know that 71% of the world's global carbon emissions are produced by 100 companies, many of which the UK is absolutely in support of. So if you are in any way involved in that, if you're supporting unknowingly that through f funding Barclays Bank and other horrific institutions like that, consider maybe moving away from those and divesting. After all, climate crime investigators can only do so much it's important we all do our part and put pressure more so on those that can do more. So right now we're outside Whitehall, outside the cabinet office, as you can see, the climate crime investigation unit is opening up the investigation here. Take much of your time. This is an 
Ecoside has been happening here Understood. at this site. We just need to collect a little bit of evidence. Are we finding anything in there, guys? Okay. If you're just joining us and you're a little bit confused, let me explain what's happening. We're currently outside Whitehall, where members of Extinction Rebellion. back to work while at the same time telling us to keep safe and um, the Covid crisis is obviously a consequence of them not paying attention to the climate. We are in a critical place with the climate now, absolutely critical. We're fortunate in the West we're a little bit protected but it's just rolling forward at an alarming pace in terms of CO2 levels, global warming. We have to tell the government, you know, that they are criminals. Fantastic. Basically. And can you say loudly, because you are wearing a mask, why you're involved today? Um, we're an independent body that um, are asking police for cooperation so that we can investigate this crime and bring this crime to light, you know, get it into the media and make them accountable. We want to wake people up and let people know that the government are hugely accountable for this, you know, gross crime. Absolutely. Um, seriously, you know, our children and our grandchildren are completely under threat because of the situation we're in. It is absolutely inconceivable to me that they're acting in the way that they are. Absolutely. You Couldn't know, agree more. At the moment, we're just trying to take some legal measures, legal measures that we can to further investigate this and obviously highlight this to the public. Fantastic. Now, I think that the climate... Ooh. We have actually found, as we suspected, we have found quite a lot of signs of ecocide here in Whitehall. We will be taking them back to the lab and investigating and letting our colleagues know here at the back. They thank you for their time. We will be thanking them for their time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for assisting, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll let you go now. We'll, we'll, we will send you the reports later once we get them from the lab. Thank you so much, guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you, guys. Okay, so now we are keeping on going. Again, if you are just joining us, we are uh, Extinction Rebellion reporting on an independent crime investigation into climate crime at various spots in London. Perhaps surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, many of these have been orientated around um, government buildings, spaces like that where ecocide perhaps is a bit more prevalently linked. It's really important to recognise here that these climate crime investigations absolutely are linked to UK politics and UK politicians. It is a global issue, um, the climate and ecological emergency. It's very, very important that we recognise our part that we have to play here. These climate crime investigators are assuring police right now, don't worry, we've done our investigation, we'll send you a report explaining exactly where you have gone wrong. Now all of this information is absolutely accessible, that's the most shocking thing about all of this, is a lot of it is not even covert. You can find out all of the information that's being referenced today online so easily, just pop on the internet, internet and you are able to see what's going on. Now I'm walking next to some people who have taken part in the demonstration today. Are you comfortable talking on camera? I'm not sure I can disclose any sensitive information about the case that we're investigating. I see, I see. Where did you start off your day today? Um, the Brazilian Embassy. Okay, and why were you at the Brazilian Embassy? Well, we were looking at the evidence of ecocide, uh, genocide, uh, they're polluting water, they're deforest in huge areas of land, 
and there's a lot of corruption. Um, we have uh, one of the biggest meat companies in the world that was implicated in a massacre. Uh, so, along with polluting, uh, polluting the waters, illegal logging, mining, the list goes on. It's massive. It is, it's enormous. One thing that really shocked me, I think, when it all came out, well, maybe not so shocked because you get involved with these movements and you recognise a lot more than perhaps you did before, is how deep-rooted so much of this crime is, really. Yep. It goes into markets as well-known as Sainsbury's and yep. things like that. And um, what got you... Oh, <laughs> we're thanking the police again for um, being supportive in the delivery of your action today, which was fantastic. Um, what kind of res what kind of um, response have you received that from the police today and uh, from everybody around been, you? They've been helping us in our investigation. They've been they've been making sure that nobody contaminates the crime scene. Uh, I think they're a little bit worried that there was a little bit too much evidence, uh, but they've been generally very helpful. Fantastic, fantastic. I'll let you keep walking. I'm going to talk to some people behind you. Hi everyone. Would anyone like to talk to me? I'm with Extinction Rebellion live streaming right now. Um, would anyone like to talk about what we're doing today? We are. In Oh, that's what we do. We're going to have to talk a bit louder because we're all wearing PPE at the moment. Okay. So, so we are investigating uh, scenes of ecocide around London and we've already visited the Brazilian embassy where we found uh, evidence of mass deforestation in the Amazon, um, mass corruption, um, crimes against indigenous peoples. Uh, we've just been to Whitehall and investigated some of the crimes there and we are now heading to Parliament Square to investigate some of the ecocide there. Um, unsurprisingly, we found a lot of evidence, um, and we've got a lot to take back to the lab to analyse. Um, so yes, yes, it's been a successful operation so far. Fantastic. And where will people be able to find information about these findings? Um, you could, there's lots and lots of places you can look. If you go onto the Extinction Rebellion website, there'll be lots of resources on there. Um, and we do encourage people to please engage, please look around and educate yourselves on the crimes that are going on around the world and the ecocide that is going on. Thank you very much. No worries. Oh, um, I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see where we are right now. And the police have stopped Extinction Rebellion crossing the road. Um, I'm hoping we will be able to, but we'll see. Let me show you. Okay. Right, they've just said that we've got to use the pedestrian crossing. Um, now, just to reiterate what we were just talking about with our wonderful crime scene investigator there, um, there is 71% of the world's global carbon emissions produced by just 100 companies. The UK is absolutely complicit in supporting those industries, those businesses, such as Barclays, such as Lloyd's, such as all of the above that are causing massive problems and more. Not only that, but we're destroying our own forests here in the UK. If you're not following the HS2 absolute corruption, then you absolutely should be or could be um, very easily by having a look on the Extinction Rebellion website, follow some of the incredible people that have been setting up camp there to try and actively fight that crime um, of ecocide that is absolutely happening. Um, I'm turning it around to show <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, the emergency filters in. So that sign, if you can't read it, says nearly 70% of cleared land in the Amazon is used for cattle grazing. Much of that cattle ends up in UK supermarkets. We are complicit in this crime. The other sign says, what kind of ancestor would you want to be? And what does it say on the other side? The biggest way to help the planet is equal eating less meat. Animal agriculture is responsible for 14.5% of greenhouse gas emissions, which is as damaging as exhaust from all transportation. Please let that sink in for a second. That is absolutely madness to think that we are supporting this devastation across the globe. We are filling our supermarkets with things that are literally killing us and making this planet a lot less hospitable for any sort of future generation. And that's important to recognise when you're watching these people, these crime scene investigators walking through these streets here in London looking for evidence of ecocide of which they have found much evidence 
that a lot of these people are invested in the future of our planet, that they have children, friends, hopes, wishes for the futures that quite frankly will be completely destroyed. As you can see, this is another example of extinction rebellion, peaceful protests going on here. Ah. Everybody stands in the same relationship in relative terms to the world's poor and the the crime scene is enveloping here. Oh. What's happening here, you might ask? This is Extinction Rebellion uh, here in central London, outside Westminster Abbey. That's the sound you can hear in the background. These are people making a stand against the climate and ecological emergency by pointing out the many fingers that the UK has in that climate crime. I think this is the worst one so far today. This is dripping in ecocide, isn't it? Are you okay? Have you got your double filter uh, mask on there? I'm concerned about cross contamination. No, yes, no cross contamination. If you're watching this and you have any questions for uh, the climate crime scene investigators, please let me know. As you can see, the police are coming through, supporting the action by making sure. We don't want anybody crossing the crime scene. We've got some. We've got some. Oh, you, well, did you feel the bag properly? Did you feel the bag properly? Yes. Good, good, good. Does anybody know of any other ecocides around here? Any um, evidence of ecocide? I have to tell you that HS2 is the biggest deforestation in the UK since the First World War. That's why it stinks so much around here, of ecocide. If you're tuning in now and you're thinking, what on earth am I watching? Let me explain to you what we're watching oh, right now. Me. Do, you, do you need some extra equipment? I think we found a Boris Biloxi down here. Oh no, I think we found it. Oh, it's definitely Boris. What did you say? It was Boris? I think it's Boris's 
Oh no! Oh my goodness me! Boris is sinning! Oh. Okay, so if you are joining us right now, what we are doing... As you can see, there's quite a lot of interest in what's going on here, which is exactly the point of actions like this. These are people getting creative to try and say a really important message, which is that we are rife with ecocide in the UK. Not only do we have ecocide that is massively impacting people in Brazil more directly and um, the 820 million people starving as a result of ecocide and the many many people experiencing poverty and land loss and animals experiencing habitat loss and all of that massive scale of people affected directly right now but also long term not only in the Amazon rainforest where we started this live stream talking about the Brazilian embassy being complicit with the UK in supporting climate crisis. But also, we are absolutely supporting mass ecocide here in the UK too, with horrific climate criminals involved in HS2. Yes, yes. Sadly, we thought the BBC, being um, a public broadcaster, would have a duty to independent to report this eco side, but sadly not. So, the Guardian might help. The Guardian often might help. Yes. Come on, guys. Let's stop chatting. We need to get back to the lab. Come on, please. Stop chatting. Let's wrap it up. What an amazing visual representation of what is happening in the UK right now. It's horrific that this sort of thing is absolutely necessary, but it is to get everybody really realizing that all of these examples of ecocide, the evidence is rife in England, in the UK, in Europe, in the world. We can do better than this. We can do better. The people here aren't talking about anything that's new news. You can find out all of the information about the UK's involvement in ecocide easily online. I could have here, I'm going to slip your card here. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a little Excuse bit naughty. Me, I can Wendell see. Wendell Daniel from Street Mine. Are you enjoying today? I wouldn't say enjoying, sir. It's, it's a labour of love. I mean, we've been reporting ecocide for a long okay, time. Okay, so right now behind me, uh, we are in Parliament Square now, um, where we've been talking about ecocide and the UK's complicity in ecocide across the world really um, we are specifically today um, talking from originally the, oh, some evidence was dropped there uh, we we're originally talking from the Brazilian embassy and putting a, pot, a spotlight on the ecocide directly linked to the Amazon rainforest in which the UK is complicit and now we are bringing that message back home to the horrific cases of ecocide that's happening at, at the HS2 sites in areas like nearby um, where I live in Boris Johnson's own constituency over in Uckfield and the horrific cases of complete injustice in a pandemic especially um, in the UK and the way that our United Kingdom government is supporting that 
injustice and ecocide. That is what these crime scene investigators are here today to do. They are investigating that crime. They're finding evidence and they're making it known. So let's follow them. I think they're off onto another onto another route. We'll see where they end up next and we'll keep talking as we go. Please let me know if you have any questions for the crime scene investigators. I'll try and make I'll try and make sure that I ask them. Okay, so let's follow them now. Um, this is also the site where we are in Parliament Square, where we've got um, other activists doing... Oh, they're coming back. Let's see. Here they are. Now, I'm not sure where we're going next or if we're continuing. It might not be the case. Let's see where we end up next. As you can see, that sign says business as usual is killing us. As you can see. Generally, the police seem quite positive and in support of this. And as you can see, we're going around to another group of Extinction Rebellion protesters. They could not even be with Extinction Rebellion. Just simply saying enough is enough. This should not be what's happening now. <laughs> we're in such an exciting time because we're able to have access to more information than ever before. What does this say? Animals bleed for human greed. So linked to the message today because uh, animal Industry, agriculture industry, is absolutely part and parcel of climate degradation, climate and habitat degradation. What does it say? It says unfuck. What does it say? What does the sign say? What sign? This sign. I haven't read it. Oh, it says unfuck the food system, I think. Plant-based food system. Could not agree more. So, so important. Where are we going here? Let's see if I can show you what's going on. It says, it says unfuck the world, uh, plant-based food system. So we want to transform to a plant-based food system. Oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Are you part of yeah. this group today? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I'm live streaming as part of Extinction Rebellion UK's site. Oh, Would you mind explaining that? Just we're in the middle, we're following right now. Yeah. Excitingly, we're following these climate crime investigators. Ah, and excellent. Which is great because... Uh, well, we know that animal agriculture connects to pandemics and to um, deforestation and to it's the major cause of climate crisis. So we're here telling the government to unfuck the system and transform to a plant-based food system so that we can all live a healthy, happy life. Fantastic. And with a lot of that is unknown. Where would you direct people to find out more about what we're talking about today? Um, I would say, I mean, online, but you have to put in the cause, you have to put, put in animal agriculture, does it connect to pandemics? Put in animal agriculture, how does it affect climate? And deforestation. Because you actually have to use the keywords because nowhere will put it out. So, yeah. so you have to be specific about that, then you find out. Also, if you go to Earthling Ed, to his, um, to his website or on Instagram, he can tell you all the information about fish, about meat, about poultry, about everything that's inside and that our system is um, causing us to be ill, to, for humans to be ill, just from eating the food, high mm. blood pressure, everything like that. It's all so, linked. And it's all linked, everything's linked. And it's and so it's not just the animals we're here for, we're here for the people and we're here for the planet. Absolutely. But we want to end the murder. You know, we want to end the murder in general, the whole yeah. murder of all of us and of this world and this ecosystem that we're living in. What do you think of the um, crime scene investigation They're group? They're fantastic. Going? Yeah, yeah, I just went past them around there and I was like, yes, and then I saw them here and I think people don't know. They just don't know. So it's time for us to get it out there, isn't it? And it to is. tell people and, to, and say, have a look for yourselves and see what you think. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to try and catch up with them, but lovely yeah, speaking cool. to you. Thank you for explaining yeah, the design. Well, thank you. Okay, everyone. So if you are just joining in, if you're just tuning in, you're thinking, who is this person on my screen? Well, um, my name's Alice. Hi, nice to see you. Um, I'm part of Extinction Rebellion and right now I'm trying to find the crime scene investigators that have been going around um, London this morning looking for evidence of climate crime. They shouldn't be all too that hard, too, that, all that hard rather, to find. I think I can see them actually ahead of me. 
um, because they are wearing bright white um, full jumpsuits explaining what is happening. I'm just going to check here. Are they finished now? Okay, fantastic. Brilliant. Right, well, I'll head back this way. <laughs> Thanks. Actually, maybe I could talk to you guys while we're walking. Is that okay? Okay, great. So we're on Extinction Rebellion's uh, UK's live stream. Right now, I've got one of the protesters here with me. What's your name? My name's Guy. Guy. Um, so Guy was with us walking around um, holding a sign that you can't read because it's backwards right now. Why is that backwards? Yeah, because I'm not filming you directly. You can read it so much, Yeah, so it says... Uh, what kind of ancestors do you want to be? Um, could you explain a bit about that and why you're involved today? Yeah, I mean, I'm involved for similar reasons to most people, but for me, I think we've lost that deep understanding that we're custodians of the planet. We don't own it. And so I want people to start thinking in terms of future generations. And it's the kind of question I think that makes people stop maybe and, and actually consider. Um, if you look at traditional societies, they know that they have to look after the land and the ecosystems they live in for future generations, whereas we seem to be just focused on consumption and pleasure a lot of the time. Um, so that's the crux of it, I suppose. Absolutely. And did you, do you know any of the people who are taking part in the action personally? In that particular action? Yeah. Uh, no, but um, I, I know plenty of people in XR. Yeah. Like, well, like most of us do. Um, yeah. I think about. the reason I answer that question is because I think for a lot of people, they're quite surprised at... Um, I'll find it difficult to get on side of the human part of XR where right. everybody's fighting for their for their say in the future of this planet um, and in spite of not knowing necessarily the people directly involved in that you're still standing oh, well, here with a placard saying yeah. I support what's happening here. You know when you join XR you end up with a feeling that everyone around you shares the same values you feel like you belong very easily yeah and then inevitably if you protest you over a long period you, you keep coming across the same people or if you get involved in organising. Some people drift away and come back. They have reasons they can't take part at the times and then they come back again. It's very fluid and that's, I think, one of its strengths. That, um, it's that like water thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, people just seem to flow in and out of it. So when, it, when it's going to be, when it works for them, I suppose, yeah. they give it the time. Absolutely. And, and one of the reasons we're here today is putting a light on the UK's involvement in, in Ecoside. Um, what was your what the fuck moment? You know, that moment where you realise the UK oh, was complicit. Well, my, my WTF moment goes back 15, 20 years. I was involved with some of the activism around the Copenhagen summit in 2009. But the difference then was that it didn't feel like there was any real grassroots pull. XR's just been a, a gift in the sense that it, it, it tapped into, I think, the zeitgeist where far more people now understand the challenge. I went through a lot of time, 10, even longer, 15 years ago, being very angry about all this, like most of us do at some point and then I just got tired of being angry and now it's um, just good to be able to be out and protest the next right. so. Thank you so much for talking to me. I'm going to follow around and I'm actually going to show everyone what I'm looking at right now which is this huge sign that says unfuck the world plant-based food system. Thank you very much have a nice day. Um, this is a big message that links absolutely to uh, the demonstration that we just saw where what was highlighted is uh, the UK's complicity in ecocide in Brazil with the burning of the Amazon, uh, much of that being used for cattle grazing. Uh, the incentives for the burning of that land has been massively increased of late. And uh, that's due to Bolsonaro and the support or the lack of condemnation as well that has come from outside of that area. Um, if you, what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to talk to some of the people behind me. Um, but I will just ask you, if you do have a second, to have a quick look online and see how you feel about everything that's being said today. Um, because you shouldn't take it just from the people that are here. You should absolutely be doing your own research if you can. I know it's difficult sometimes, but a lot of this is publicly accessible. Um, not only is, it, is the UK complicit in ecocide abroad, but also at this site behind me here in Parliament Square, we've got people protesting on behalf of... Um, on, and in solidarity with the many that are currently still standing, unable to be here because they're standing um, protecting the trees in the UK countryside in HS2, the, the scene of absolute clear and evident um, climate crime, where uh, ancient woodlands and huge beautiful spaces that are so important for our environment, for our health, 
for the health of animals that are non-human and for our future generations. And without it, just like other green spaces and nature across the world, we quite simply don't have a future, at least not for the vast majority. And for many people, this is a reality that is past breaking point already. Um, we have a chance at the moment to try and change things. So let me see if we can talk to some of the people behind me. Um, I'm gonna try and cross the road in a second. Um, I recognize two friends here, Dora and Toby, that I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if she can get, I'm gonna pop across here. If you're wondering what's happening now, it's not exactly what we were originally coming down um, to follow. I was following earlier the crime scene investigators who are going through different parts of London looking for evidence of climate crime. We ended our action today here in Parliament Square where we can see uh, many activists from Extinction Rebellion and Animal Rebellion um, specifically here now with a sign saying unfuck the and fuck the world plant-based food system this is a really really important message because what we've been talking about today is absolutely linked with this looking for evidence of climate crime you can find it in our supermarkets you can find it pretty much everywhere you turn so what i'm going to see is if in a second i can speak to somebody um, or a couple of people who are involved in this beautiful action today like i said civil disobedience as part of extinction rebellion that has three clear demands and right now is particularly pushing for a bill a climate and ecological emergency bill to be signed by politicians in the uk which would be binding for our involvement in these things that we are so aware of really it's so publicly accessible to stop to make change as you can see you've got some of the protesters here with blood on their hands I want to get to Toby and Dora, but they're in the middle of all the shouting right now. So Power! 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 Power!
Okay, so I'm hoping. That would have been amazing. Hello, that Toby. Amazing. How are you? It was amazing. How are you doing? Really good. How are you? Fantastic. Yeah, I'm just live streaming as part of XR UK right now. Amazing. amazing. Um, the reason being, I was. Yeah. <laughs> this is Toby, everyone. Toby is part of Animal Rebellion and Extinction Rebellion. Yep. Um, all part of the same entity, really, yeah, just different branches. Yep. Um, I was hoping, Toby, would you be? We've just been. The reason we've been here today is following yep. the um, climate crime investigators oh, that have been looking nice. at different climate crimes happening in different parts of London. We, what we found out is that it's kind of rife everywhere in London, surprise it or not, yep. and also in the UK in general. Yep. Um, and one of the biggest things, well, we started off in, in the uh, Brazilian embassy, okay. which I think is particularly prudent when it comes to animal rights and also um, the animals' involvement in yeah. being part of the climate crisis solution. Could you talk a little bit about um, that form of ecocide and, and why you're here and talk a bit through what Animal Rebellion is doing as well? Of course, specifically with regard to um, Brazil or with regard to... Uh, well, you could talk about that as well. I really would like you to talk about climate crime in general and how it relates to um, okay. animal... Well, I mean, um, ecocide, I mean, I'm sure you've explained what ecocide has been many times, but I think it's an amazing thing and it needs to be put into law in every country, in every county, in every every person's heart, basically. Yeah, and explain that. Explain what it is. Yeah, go for so it. So ecocide is basically um, where, uh, a law that uh, will hold people, individuals, organisations and countries accountable for their actions. So, the, you know, for example, uh, our government has, has uh, allowed the Department of Transport, has allowed HST to go ahead. So this, and this, in their own words, HS2 won't, won't be carbon neutral for 120 years. And this, I mean, that, that and they, they're digging up 108 ancient woodlands. They're going through people's lives. They're going through um, animals' animals' homes and destroying these homes. And if ecocide was actually part of our law, then they would be held accountable and they could actually be sued for their, their actions. So that's basically what, what happens in, with regard to ecocide, the, the basics. And we can all become conscientious protectors, and I would definitely look into that. It's really, really important that we have a, it's the Knowledge of Conscience Act that came through the, uh, the Universal Human Rights Act just after the First World War, I believe. Um, it was, I think, conscientious objectors were, um, there were Quakers, I think, that, that stood up and said, I, I, don't believe to go, I don't believe in this war, World War I. And many of them were actually put in prison for treason. Many, many of them were actually um, put to death as well for this because of treason. And then it actually became a thing, you know, a conscientious objector became part of the law. And then, uh, and then in the Second World War, the conscientious objectors were actually um, given other things to do that could help, help their, their local communities and help the, the country itself. So now we are saying we're, we're doing this for our conscience. We're doing this because we know that the, the world is dying and we know that all life on, 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 that we know right now is actually coming to an end. With the sea rise, with, uh, with famine, with the social, social collapse that's going to happen, lack of food, we're not going to get food imported to our country, so we need to start dealing with it now. And we need to, this, this government and all the massive organisations, the animal agricultural organisations, the big pharma, all these huge, huge influential powers to be held accountable for, 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 for their actions and for their choices. With regard to animal agriculture, and with regard to Brazil and everything else, I mean, it's the biggest contributor to the climate emergency that we find ourselves in. Um, not only did they use um, huge, huge amounts of, of um, machinery and burn a lot of fossil fuel in the system in processing these animals and bringing them up, bringing them into life, keeping them in, in, um, in farms, in, in, in factory farms and enslaving them, but also in the actual processing, the slaughter and the distribution to the, to, 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 to the shops and then eventually to people's plates. Um, it's actually, this, this, this itself is a massive contributor to the climate emergency that we're, we're all facing, but also with regard to deforestation. So, in, for example, in, in Brazil, they are, they're basically stripping down land, land and they're, they're grazing their cattle on it, and then the cattle graze it so much that nothing else can be grown on it, uh, so they've done strip another piece of land down. It, with the Brazilian, I think it was common, there's an environmental min, environment minister who I read on the, or I listened to on the radio, and he said, if we actually manage our land, properly, we wouldn't have to cut down one more tree and we'd still be able to provide the world with food. And this is a, isn't only meat, they provide a lot of vegetables, a lot of plant-based food as well. I mean, I'm not promoting the, the plant-based food to come over here because that's exporting and importing, which also contributes to the climate emergency. 
but if, they, if, if the government um, gave the people, the individual people, the farmers, the ability and the knowledge to look after their land, to look after themselves, to look after their communities, then they wouldn't have to cut down all these trees. And these trees are vital. These, the Amazon is vital for, for, for weather systems. The animal, Amazon is vital for oxygen in the air and is vital for um, uh, 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 sucking down the, the, the pollution and the, 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 the uh, carbon that we're actually emitting and the methane that we're emitting into, this, into, this, into the atmosphere. And not only the Amazon, every, every jungle, every tree, every, every plant, we need to rewild the world. It is actually estimated that if the world went um, vegan by 2050, which is when, we're, when it's estimated that we're going to be over 10 billion people on the planet, if the world went vegan by then, by 2050, which would be too late in my opinion, but we would free up the land mass the size of the continent of Africa. You can fit North and South America and Europe and, and most of Asia, and I think Russia in this, the continent of Africa. So imagine that land that's being wasted right now. 80% or 90% of land is being uh, used for animal agriculture and we only get 18% of, of the calories that we need. It's, it's absolutely atrocious. So we can change that round to a plant-based, a just and sustainable plant-based food system for all life, for the humans involved, for us, for our health, for the animals, for the, for the planet itself and for all life, as I said, then we, we can't go wrong, can we? It's just, and, and it, it, if we carry on with animal agriculture, the planet is just gonna die. We're all gonna die. The life as we know is gonna die. So, so this is why we need ecocide, and this is why we need these amazing people walking around sharing their love and sharing the, the, the information. Thank you so much, Toby. That was really, really helpful. Thank you. I'm going to keep going and seeing if anyone else will chat to me today. Thank oh, goodness. So wow. Um, next to me right now is evidence of what will happen, as Toby said, if ecocide is it. Ignored. On the side of this it says factory farming biggest single risk of future pandemics what a great visual representation of what we're talking about yeah this is what our future looks like if we don't make significant changes Talk about evidence of ecos of massive involvement in climate catastrophe. You're looking at it here, really. Yeah. Okay. 
Are you excited? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, is that okay if I ask you some questions? Oh, yes, yeah, of okay, course, perfect. Of course. Okay, brilliant. We've got our friend here. What's your name? Sylvia. Sylvia. And Sylvia is here at the Animal Rebellion specifically process. Yeah. Uh, well, why are you here? Could you explain why you've, you've decided to take part today? Yes, actually, uh, I think it's very important that we, we try to, I mean, to show the government that they're not doing a great job telling the truth about climate crisis and animal agriculture. And actually, we are here to say that they, are blo they have blood on their hands because they're, with that action, they are contributing to uh, the suffering of millions of animals every single day and to the destruction of our planet. And we are all here, we are all involved in this chaos and this crisis. We need to, to speak up for them. That's why I'm here. Amazing. And could you tell me why what this is about here with the with the coffin? Yeah, actually, the coffin represents like the death that we are living. I mean, this is actually represents the dying of the animals that are killed every day in the animal industry, so in animal agriculture. But yeah, it also it can also represent us because as we saw now, they were carrying a person inside. We are already dying for the COVID-19 and there will probably be more pandemic to continue with this, uh, yeah, with our behavior. So, yeah. I think it's really interesting because you've got blood on your hands. Yeah. If you show the camera your hands for a second, yes, you've got you've got these red bloody hands. Blood, yeah. Why why do you have blood on your hands? Yeah, because I mean I we, we all try to do our best in life. And people that are here, I know we try to do our best. But basically, with our action, we also represent the world. We represent the government. We represent the people, and we all have blood on our hands. And especially the government, we have blood on their hands. We all contribute to the suffering of the animals, and we we will we will be we will have our own blood on our hands if we continue like this. Amazing. Is there anything you want? Thank you so much for talking to me. I think it's really impactful what you're what you're talking about. What what is it that worries you worries you the most about what's happening? What what is it that worries you the most about what ha what's happening? Uh, you mean in, uh, in the world. In the in the in the world, when it comes to so today, what we've been doing is we've been talking about ecocide, yeah. um, and we've been talking about how the UK is complicit in massive amounts of climate and ecological damage in the UK and across the world. Um, how, what, what worries you the most about about what we're talking about? Because we've been looking for evidence yeah. of, of climate and ecological destruction yeah. involvement in the UK. We found lots today. Yeah. Um, what worries you the most about about so, this? Yeah, I mean, I, what worries? I mean, I think uh, I don't want to. I don't want to find myself. I, I like. I like to see myself in the future, caught, caught, caught up in something like really bad that you cannot even imagine. You know, like I don't know, in a in a, in a, in a um, ecological disaster, or like without a home, not knowing where to go, in a like in a civil war all around because people have no more food, no more water. And yeah, actually, that is so scary. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's like so uncertain that I really, I'm really scared. Yeah, that's what worries me the most. Worries yeah. your, your future and probably the future of your friends and family as well. Most of your family in the UK? No, my family are in Italy. In Italy, so one of the places most affected by the pandemic. So in some ways this is probably more personal to you. I was really scared when that happened. I wasn't living in Italy when Covid broke up and yeah, I was for my family, I was thinking, what else? Will, what, what, what's next? Like, what's, yeah, around the corner, I we don't know. Like, that's, that's really scary. Yeah. Uh, and what message would you have to anyone watching who's thinking about getting involved but not quite there yet? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think if you have, if you know about this, you're getting informed. Like, I mean, there, is, there are lots of ways to, to to do your part. So just just try to get information, connect with people, and I'm sure everyone can find a way to get involved and to do actions or protests that they they, 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 they believe in. So yeah, it's just to do the first step to get to yeah, know people like, and I think it would be easy for yeah. everyone to, to, to do something. <laughs> Amazing, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Right, okay, so this is, like I said, uh, we are at the Animal Rebellion protest now um, in Parliament Square where they're, they are holding a sign that says, unfuck the world plant-based food system. This is one of the solutions to fighting a dying planet, preventing the destruction that is happening right now. Um, that is why everyone's here, because they're worried, they're scared, um, and things have got to change. I'm gonna turn the camera around to me right now. I don't need to put my mask on because I'm away from everybody else it's very hot um, if you have been listening to this and you've been thinking you know what um, I want to get involved I want to 
um, fight for change as well. Please do so. Join the rebellion. There's lots of places that you can do that. Um, if you have a look at the Extinction Rebellion website, if you follow through um, on this page too, you can absolutely do the same and join these amazing people that are really um, trying to do their bit in spite of just being everyday normal people. Um, we're aware that 71% of the world's carbon emissions right now are being largely uh, caused by around 100 companies. 71% of global carbon emissions caused by 100 companies. We know that we've had greater forest fires um, this year than ever before. We know that we're in facing increasing uh, climate degradation. We know that we've got a pretty bleak future if we continue this way. Uh, the purpose, the original purpose of this um, conversation today was to put a spotlight on the UK's involvement in climate crime. Um, it is vast and there's lots of resources out there to find out more about that, which is great that we are in such an exciting time in that we know uh, we have access to that where we haven't before. So um, that's exciting. What isn't exciting is the prospect of a future where the advice, the knowledge that we know, all of this plethora of information um, that we have with us um, is ignored. So um, please follow Extinction Rebellion. Um, join us as Extinction Rebellion or as um, or not, that's fine, it doesn't matter, just um, get involved either in person, online, be a digital computer uh, keyboard warrior. Um, all the help is so, so valuable to try and put a spotlight on this. Um, Extinction Rebellion has three key demands. There's also a climate and ecological emergency bill that's being trying to be pushed through Parliament right now, trying to get our, um, our politicians to sign on board. More information for that will be in the comments, um, so make sure you look out for that and um, to support it. Um, change is possible, but we need to work together. Thanks very much for listening. I um, feel like that's pretty apt, the sound of ambulances going past. This is an emergency. Um, and join if you can. Wherever you are, I hope you're safe. Um, this is me here at Parliament Square, uh, where there's still lots of people here as part of Extinction Rebellion, Animal Rebellion. Um, looking to try and make a difference. Bye.